Bamboo Lab sent me another mystery printer. Let's get it open and see what we've got coming. All right, still don't know from the top. I gotta cut open the whole box. Still don't know. Guys, it's the P2S. I had no idea they were releasing a P2S. I can't wait to see what's different, how it compares to the P1S. That's my favorite printer of this size, of course. I love the H2, but man, I'm so excited. And based on the picture on the box, it looks like it has a screen probably pretty close to the X1 Carbon. I can't wait to see this printer. Okay, so the quick start guide, a box of tools, and a QR code for the unboxing guide. Wasn't super heavy. I love the color, like a charcoal gray. The P1s are black and then X1 and the H2s are silver. So this will be a nice color to go along with all of the others. Ooh, nice. Okay, it's got a perfect little hand spot right here. That seems like super sturdy and strong if you need to lift it up. That's super cool. The glass top, I'll just set it right there for now. All right, the door is free. All the tape on the outside is off. Let's start getting the AMS out of there. Accessory box. Okay, start removing some screws. Yay, the AMS is free. Now I can clear out everything else inside. Okay, and then there's some screws in here. So far, it does look like a souped up version of the P1S. Next, I'll free up all these things. Next, I will work on the screen. It seems to be like the next task. I'm excited to see what this screen looks like. Because any of you guys that are coming from the P1s, you know that we didn't have a screen. Well, we did have a sort of screen. But not a nice screen. And oh boy, does this one look nice. Look at the size of that thing. Okay, screen has been attached. Kidoki. Now, I believe all I have left to do is put the top back on and hook up the AMS. And this is the AMS 2 Pro. So I think that is now the standard. The P2S and the AMS2 Pro are a unit together and that's awesome. Take that out. Okay. Inside is good. Now let's get out these power cords and get this thing running. This is the connector cable that goes from the AMS to the back of the printer. And this is pretty cool. So the P1S only has, the hub only has one spot to connect one AMS, but this one's already set up to where you could connect two AMSs. That's pretty awesome. Cause I feel like eight colors is like the sweet spot or the, not the most you would want to connect, but how often are you really printing with 16 colors? That's crazy to have the whole extra hub. Nice they have it, but eight, I think, is perfect. All right, I think I've got everything plugged in, and ready to go. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Hello. Okay, let's do these initial setup steps. It's starting the calibrations. So while it is calibrating, we gotta find some models to print which I don't think will be hard. We're close to Halloween. There's so many things I've been wanting to print. I just gotta make sure I have the right colors. All right, let's get all this out of here now. 
Beautiful, now it can do its thing. I love the positioning of this light. It seems so bright in there. That's awesome. Okay, let's go to Maker World and see what kinds of things are up on there right now. Halloween zombie hand, that's awesome. That looks so cool. I need to see if I have any green. Ooh, I have, hmm, ooh, I have this. This would be a kind of cool green. This is the Bamboo Lab. I'm not sure, I'll have to look it up. It's one of their matte colors and I really, really like it. I have this color and I also could go with this like teal translucent color. I'm gonna get this one out of the box and compare it to this and see which one I wanna go with. Both could be really cool. And the file says that if you're gonna use it outdoors, use PETG. If you're gonna use it indoors, use PLA. I only have bamboo PLA with me and I'm only gonna set it out on Halloween night. So I think it would be fine. I don't think, I don't plan to just like leave this out in the elements, but I still think it might be fine and it might be something fun to test. So we'll see. I'm gonna use PLA though. This is a really pretty color. Look at that. The translucent, that would be crazy cool. So I think I'll start, I'll print the zombie hand with the green just to start. And I do want to use this because I love it. It's so fun. I got to find a different model for that. But we're going to start with the zombie hand. Okay, I've got the hand, the zombie hand sliced. It said to use supports, but I'm going to print it base settings. I'm not changing speed. I'm not changing literally anything. Um, it's going to take 225 grams of filament around six and a half hours. So I should be able to run something else later this evening so I can keep these tests rolling. But I am pretty excited about this hand. I think that's gonna look super cool. And I might even print a couple more so that my little Halloween setup can just have like zombie hands coming out of the ground all over the place. I think that would look pretty awesome. But we're still just waiting on this to finish up the calibrations. It's got, it's at 73%. So hopefully it's almost finished. Then we'll be able to load the filament get this thing running. Calibrations are done. Get started. Let's load up some filament. It has been sent. We should have, hopefully, a successful print by the evening. I'm pretty excited. The zombie hand has just finished up and it looks incredible. Perfect quality. And when I was at home, I decided to check the camera feed and see what the camera quality looks like inside this machine. And oh boy, is it an upgrade from the P1S. I never used the time-lapse function of the P1S. I never checked the cameras. It's just grainy and low quality. But this camera is 1080p. When you look at it, you see what you see. It looked awesome. I would definitely consider using the time-lapse function of this one. All right, let's get this off the build plate and get another print running. And I said I wanted to use this PLA translucent, which is definitely the next move. I think I'm gonna print a giant Lego head lantern. I think that's gonna look really awesome with the translucent filament. We'll be able to see the light shining through. I'm very excited for it. Okay, I scaled up the Lego head to 150%. It's gonna take 12 hours and about 270 grams of filament. So we'll see what happens. So not what I hoped would come of this giant Lego head. I did have to stop the print overnight, but it was still a cool experience with the new printer. So the P1s, the only bamboo handy notifications that I ever get are AMS related or extruder related. Can't feed the filament into the extruder, AMS overloaded, something like that. But yesterday, my bamboo handy notification popped up for this print and it said spaghetti warning. And that's not something that I've ever gotten before. So that's actually really, really cool. I know the X1 Carbon, it already had it. The H2 has it, that's awesome. But with the P1s, I've never had that. And so when I pulled it up and checked the camera, which again is crystal clear, I could see that some of the supports had popped loose. 
I decided to go ahead and let the print go for another hour just to see if maybe there was just a few pieces of spaghetti and it's something I could clip off later, but after an hour passed, I checked again and no, I needed to stop the print, but still a cool experience and a really cool feature that this printer has. The P1s, I never would have known what happened. I just would have come back to a mess unless the tool head cover popped off and that stopped the print itself. So pretty cool. I saved some filament, even though I had a failed print. But now that the print has failed, I do need to get it off the build plate. It was a bed adhesion issue, I think with the translucent filament. I must not have the correct bed temperature settings, but that's fine. I've never used that filament before. And just to make sure that I get a good print today and then overnight tonight, I'm probably not gonna continue with this filament for this specific project, but I will come back to it again in the future. Well, let's see what happened. Yeah, a lot of the supports popped loose. They were kind of small, so that kind of makes sense. And yeah, it's a good thing I stopped it because it really did need those supports. The front was looking good, but this side over here, basically all of the supports had come loose. But that's okay, I'll find another cool print and we'll see what this thing can do with something else. I found a cool pumpkin tea light holder by Sabre Design on Maker World. And I have a plan. I still wanna try the translucent, but I'm also gonna print one of them with the sparkle purple. I'm printing by objects so that if one of them fails, the translucent maybe, I can cancel that object and just jump to the next one. That way maybe I'll still have one successful print. I don't think there's any supports and with the translucent filament print from last night, everything stuck except for the small support pieces. So I'm confident, mildly confident that I'll get two successful tea light pumpkins with this one. Five hours and a hundred grams of filament later, I hopefully will have two pumpkin tea light holders. And then this afternoon we'll be able to run something else and then I think my testing of the P2S will be complete, hopefully. But so far I'm really liking it. The tea light pumpkins came out perfect. Both filaments, the translucent, Look super cool. I'm excited to see what that looks like with the tea light inside. And same for the purple sparkle. I love both of these. I had no bed adhesion issues this time. It turns out it was just the supports for the botched Lego head. That's awesome. The translucent filament and the sparkle filament stuck just fine. No problems. So now we need to find one more print to really test this thing out. Oh, I have no idea what I'm gonna pick, but there's plenty to choose from. I found my final print. It's gonna be the Ghost Candy Bowl. It's by Sivro on Maker World. A typical ghost would be printed in white, but I think I'm gonna have a little bit more fun and print it in this bamboo color change gradient filament. I think this will look pretty cool. Maybe like a blueberry cotton candy kind of vibe. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. The final print has been sent in about six and a half hours and 200 grams of filament. We should have our final test print. And then tomorrow morning when I get back to the shop, I'll remove all of my supports and we will see the hand and hopefully the ghost candy bowl come to life. And stay tuned for my final thoughts on the P2S. You'll hear the good if there's any bad, but as you can tell, I really like this printer, so it probably will be mostly good, but stay tuned, it's coming. The ghost candy bowl came out flawless. I love it and the blue gradient is beautiful. I'm so happy with it. Let's get all of these supports off and let's hear the final thoughts and everything that is the P2S. All right, pretty clean. Nice. I love it. My perfect little candy bowl. I feel like it could be bigger. Maybe this is something I throw on the H2S later. And last, the zombie hand. Super cool. I can't wait to put this out front for Halloween. 
I love it. Okay, so P2S. It is an upgrade from the P1s or the P1S specifically. It's got the quick swap nozzle. It's got a more powerful extruder that's supposed to be able to detect clogs and stop the filament grinding that sometimes happens with softer PLAs like mats or maybe if your filament gets just a little bit too wet. Those are some things that I've noticed on my P1S. The nozzle features the auto dynamic flow calibration. So it's supposed to be able to detect the correct flow rate of your filaments just by being fed into the extruder and the nozzle. And it's got some cool AI error detection features, which I mentioned earlier in the video about the spaghetti detection. That's not something I ever got from my P1s, so I'm pretty excited to have that with the P2s. I think that is an awesome upgrade. It's just like what's on the H2, and I think maybe even was on the X1 Carbon. It's got some cool airflow features. It cools down the chamber so that you don't have to worry about venting when you're printing with PLAs. And it's also got a performance carbon filter so that you can safely print using the P2S inside an enclosed space or in your home. And some of the more fun features. I love the screen. It's so nice having this big, beautiful screen compared to the small P1S screen that we're used to having. The lighting seems better and the video footage, the camera. It's crystal clear, it's 1080p. You can actually see the tool head moving around. There's no glitching and stopping and it's just very nice. I'm very happy with all the features that they decided to pack into this P2S. And on top of that, it's not a bad price. It's basically the same price we're used to having with the P1s, but those are the specs. And you've seen my thoughts and my prints. And obviously I'm a fan. I love bamboo. I love everything that they're doing. This printer is amazing. I love the P2S. I will definitely be getting more of them and upgrading my P1s to the new P2s. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Will you be upgrading your printers? Will you be grabbing a new one? Are you new to the 3D printing space and this could be your first printer? If so, it's beginner friendly. I highly recommend it. It's awesome. As for this video, this initial P2S review, those are my thoughts. I like it, I'm a fan. You'll definitely be seeing more P2S content coming your way. It's an awesome printer and I am very excited to keep using it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my Patreon members for all the support. You guys are amazing and I could do none of this without you guys. That's all we've got and I'll see you guys in the next video.